Hello, and welcome to another Look Smarter Than You Are with Interrel video. My name is Michael Darui, and I'll be your host for What Are FDME Logic Groups? Why use a logic group? Creating a logic group is not a requirement. This functionality in FDME should be used by a case-by-case -case basis. With data load mapping, you can set up multiple source values to map to one target value. However, in FDME, loading to more than one target value is not allowed. A common use of logic groups is loading one source member to two target members, such as the need to load data to two currencies like USD and USD reporting. Or you may have the need to load to a debit account if the amount is positive and a credit account if the amount is negative. Another would be to load to an asset account such as cash on hand if bank balances are positive or a liability account like overdraft if the sum is negative. Besides loading to two target members, criteria within a logic group allows for specific calculations on the value to take place. You can summarize dimension members by a range of accounts in order to create a new intersection with summarized data or perform mathematical calculations on a value. By Oracle's definition, the purpose of creating a logic group is to calculate accounts in a specific manner once source data is loaded. Two options are available when creating a logic group, simple and complex. Simple allows you to derive logic items from the source account dimension, as complex allows you to derive logic from any combination of dimensions. Logic accounts within a group are replicated data points that will need to be mapped once created. To create a logic group, select Logic Group under the Setup tab. Be sure to select the target application for the data that will need the logic applied to. This example will focus on creating a logic group to load data to two different currencies. L underscore USD has been created as a complex logic group to allow for additional functionality to be added. Okay, we have the logic group created. Now, we need to set up the logic items. In this example, source currency is not being brought in, so we cannot map from a currency source. Instead, the segment dimension is selected. Each segment must be represented for the logic to be applied to the entire data set. First, the item must be specified. It is recommended to prefix the item by L dash in order to recognize the logic member in the data set within data load workbench. The description is straightforward. This field is displayed in the account description field in the workbench if the account description is added. If not, a description is still useful to identify the logic item. The criteria value determines what members to include in the logic calculation for any given logic dimension. This will be explained in detail shortly. If the logic item criteria is met, the include calc field enables the logic item to include previously calculated FDME A values in its calculations. Operator refers to the math operators such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, expression operators, and function. An example for using this is if the multiplication operator is used with the value in the value expression field. Then, the new record will have an amount two times the original amount. In our setup, we are not altering the amount, so the NA, not available operator, will be used. As mentioned, the value expression works with the operator to derive values based on the operator field. The sequence field specifies the order in which the logic items are processed. When dealing with more than one logic item, it is best to keep a consistent sequence format, such as by going by tens. Carrying on, the criteria value determines what members to include for any dimension. Within the setup, we must select the target value dimension, this being UD6. Criteria type determines the type of criteria value. These types follow the same logic as in data load mappings. Use in to specify a single value, between for a range of values, and like for a set of values using a special character. In is selected since we are applying logic to a single segment member. Group by is how we will view the logic item in the workbench. For each segment, we receive parse division, we will duplicate that intersection with the segment L dash parts. In many cases, group level can be left at zero. Group level only accepts numeric values. When left at zero, the entire group by name is displayed. If one is selected, the first character of the group by name is shown. So, instead of L dash parts, we will see L dash P. If many logic items are to be added, be sure to save your logic group after each one. Now that we have our logic group set up for the target application name plan, the next step is to create a mapping for the new logic name. As mentioned, export is selected in the logic group setup, so we just need to map for our new logic items. In our setup, each replicated parts division intersection will contain a duplicate intersection with L dash parts as a source segment member. If all logic items have their group by names prefixed by L dash, 
Then we will just need to add in one additional mapping. Our current mapping loads all segment values to USD underscore reporting. A second like mapping is created to map all segments beginning with L dash to USD. Now that our mapping is complete, our last step before re-importing is to assign the logic group to our location. In order for the data intersections to replicate, to include the logic calculations, the logic group must be specified in the logic account group within location details for the FDME location. Once the logic group is assigned, we must re-import our data for the logic group to create our replicated data points. All right, we can now see the fruits of our labor. Our data has re-imported with the new mapping applied to our currency dimension. We see a replicated intersection mapping to USD, while our original intersection maps to USD underscore reporting. And there you have it, folks. We have successfully created a new logic group. Now, there are five things to remember before we leave today. One, keep logic item names consistent with impacted members. Two, prefix logic items with an L dash to indicate the logic is successful in data load workbench. Three, select export on each line item detail. Four, map the new logic items in data load mapping. And five, assign the logic group to the appropriate FME location. Once you have these five things under your control, you are ready to re-import your data and see your logic group in action.